prayer. Father God, we bless your name tonight. Father God, we give you honor, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for who you are, Lord God. And we bless your name tonight, Father God. Father God, we decree and declare, Father God, that your word go out, Lord God. For your word is living, it is alive, and it comes in for reproof and correction and profitable doctoring, Lord God. So we glorify you tonight, Lord God, as we get in the midst of your word, Lord. And Holy Spirit, we say, have your way in this service. And we give you honor, Holy Spirit, as the senior pastor of our church, Holy Spirit. We glorify you and honor you, Lord God. Now you be glorified, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen and amen. Glory to God. Tonight we are going to be talking about understanding who you are in the kingdom understanding who you are in the kingdom and if i have a, a subtitle for this message it would have been kingdom mindset glory to god so tonight i want to go ahead and start with just kind of laying out what tonight will look like so laying out what tonight will look like we're going to understand who you are in the kingdom but before we can understand who we are in the kingdom, we need to understand some principles from the beginning. Glory to God. I'm going to try to calm down because I'm a little excited. I'm also going to be coming from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is our schoolmaster. And we live from the finished work of the cross and we understand that. But the Old Testament brings understanding to the New Testament and how we live under the covenant of Jesus Christ instead of the old law book, glory to God. So the principles still work. That's why it's always good to go back to the schoolmaster to look and see what the principles look like. So the first principle that we're going to come from tonight is Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. We're going to be coming from the Amplified and the first principle is creating us a kingdom domain. You can write that down. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Creating us a kingdom domain. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. Uh, emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the deep the spirit of god was moving hovering over the face of the waters so i'm gonna let you know what this first principle is creating us a kingdom domain in a kingdom if we're looking at the earth in a kingdom a child cannot rule until his or her parents pass away now let's take a look at Queen Elizabeth II for an example. She's 94 years old. She's the Queen of England. She has three boys and a girl, which are still called princes and prince. Prince Charles can't even take his seat as ruler on the throne because Queen Elizabeth has not passed away or stepped down. And in a kingdom in the earth, the only way a child can rule is if a parent passes away or steps down. And he's already 71 years old, bless his heart. He's been waiting to rule his whole entire life. Well, our daddy, the king of kings, glory to God. And we're the queen, king and queens in the earth. There's a few times in history where a child in the natural becomes a king and a queen at the same time as their parents. And God done this exact same thing. But the kid has to be sent to a different territory in order to become a king or a queen while the parent is still alive. And this is exactly what God done for us. 
He wanted us to rule and reign like him. So he created the earth with us in mind. So the first principle we got to understand is that the earth was created as a kingdom domain so that we can rule and reign. He had to create us another territory to walk into. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isaiah 9 and 6 proves out that we are in a kingdom. We're not in a belief and we're not in a religion. We are in a kingdom. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For us a child shall be born. To us a son shall be, a son shall be given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So the earth was not just created for any reason. We didn't just get picked out of all the places in the universe and all the galaxies. He didn't just pick earth. It was created for us to have a kingdom domain. Glory to God. My second principle. Is that we reflect his nature. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. God speaks. God spoke. Let us make humans in our image. And when he said our, I just want to point this out right quick. He was talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. He said, let us make humans in our image. Make them reflect our nature so that they can be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds in the air and the cattle. And yes, earth itself. The Bible proves out our first principle. Let them reflect our nature. Glory to God. So that they can be responsible for the earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature, reflecting his character. Them male and female, God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. Be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds in the air for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. So I want to point some things out about that scripture because we're looking at the second principle. And the second principle is we reflect his nature. Things that we've got to understand about reflecting his nature. The first thing that we need to understand is what image means. Image comes from a Latin word that means imago. It means a characteristic of a person. So it's not the outer appearance that God created us in. It was who he was. Nature means the intimate or essential quality, a characteristic of a person. And so... Isn't it funny how he said that twice in the scripture? Let's make them in our image, in our nature. Let's make them in our characteristic. Glory to God. Let's make them be just like us. Let's make them a territory that they can rule in just like us. So now we got to understand what God's characteristic looks like. His characteristics, here are just a list of some of them, is love, is faithfulness, is light, his characteristic is patience, his characteristic is peace, his characteristic is a provider, it's grace, it's mercy, his characteristic is that his words are alive and that he speaks things into existence. So why did he create us with his characteristics? Thank you for asking. It's because without his characteristic, 
we would have no authority on the earth. That's big. When the Holy Spirit showed me that without the holy, without the characteristic of our father, our daddy, the king of kings himself, we would have no authority in the earth because his characteristic is an authority. He has an authoritative characteristic. Glory to God. Glory to God. Which leads me to my third principle. The third principle is speaking into existence. Genesis chapter 1, 3 through 25 God himself showed us what that looks like. It says God spoke light and light appeared. God saw the light was good and separated the light from the dark. God named the light day and he named the dark night. It was evening and it was morning on the first day. God spoke sky in the middle of the waters spread water from water and God made sky. He separated the water from under the sky and from the water above. And there, there it was. He named the sky heaven and, and it was evening. It was morning on day two. God spoke separate waters beneath the heaven gathered into one place land appeared and there it was God named land earth and he named the pooled pools of water ocean God saw it was good God spoke earth green up grow all vegetation and seed bearing plants every sort of fruit bearing tree and there it was earth produced green seeds bearing plants all varieties and the fruit bearing trees of all sorts god seen it was good it was evening and it was morning and we are on day three glory to god of him speaking things into existence god spoke lights come out Shine in the heavenly skies. Separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and every light in heaven's sky and give light to the earth. And there it was. God made two big lights. The larger to take charge of the day and the smaller to take charge of the night. He made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up the earth and oversee the day and night to separate light from darkness. And God seen that it was good. And it was evening. It was morning on the fourth day. God created ocean with fish of all sea life birds fly through the air over the earth god created huge wells and and swarms of life in the water and every kind of species in the in flying birds god saw it was good god blessed them prosper reduce fill the ocean birds reproduce and on the earth and fill it it was evening and it was morning on day five God spoke, earth generate life, every sort and kind, cattle, reptiles, wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals and every kind of cattle, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw it was good, glory to God. It was day and it was night and we're on day six, glory to God. So I'm going to go back up to my principle that we were just talking about. Speaking into existence. If we go back to Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 through 25, all the way down the scriptures that I just read, God spoke, God spoke, God spoke, God spoke. God spoke everything into existence and it was. Glory to God. 
the very God that spoke those things into existence, the Bible says in Romans that the same God lives on the inside of us. Glory to God. I'm, I'm traveling off my notes. But when we accepted Christ in our heart and we became Christ filled and we accepted him and we believe that he died and rose again. The very God that spoke into the existence now lives on the inside of us and we're carrying his characteristics. So from the very beginning, he already established in the earth exactly what we needed to do is speak. We use our words of our mouth to create and seal laws in the earth, just as Queen Elizabeth does in her kingdom. Just as she does in England, when it comes time to make a law and a decree, she speaks it out and it is sealed. We do that same thing with our mouth in this kingdom. Glory to God. We speak it in the atmosphere and the atmosphere has to obey. The Bible clearly says in Hebrews that the word of God is living. It is alive. It moves. It breathes. It comes in for reproof and correction and profitable doctrine. It comes in to establish and uproot things. Glory to God. And it goes to our very bone marrow right when our blood cells are created. So when we speak the word of God, the word itself is alive. God shows us in Genesis 1 through chapter 1, verses 3 through 25, what it looks like in real time, calling those things that are not as though they were, Romans 4 and 17. Glory to God. Did you see that? There, there, there was no light. The earth was formless, and he called those things that be not as though they were, and they were like Cain. He told the waters to separate and they did. He told birds to be in the air and they were. Glory to God. Throughout the Bible, he tells us there's life and death created in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs 18 and 21. Why did he, why did he say that? Why was it important to put into his word? This is saying that the stakes are high. Every time we say something, the stakes are high. Every time we open up our mouth, the stakes are real high because there's life or there's death that is created out of our mouth because we're created in the Lord's image. We're created in his nature. We're created in his characteristic. So we can understand by being created in his characteristic, being created in his nature, the stakes are high when we open up our mouths. Glory to God. This is saying that's that the word is why because our creator from the beginning created us in his character and in his nature i'm sorry in his nature and in his image another good example of god of this is god told adam to name every animal again calling those things that be not as though they were when Adam done this in Genesis chapter two, and he told God told Adam to go out and name all the animals. If he called it a deer, it was a deer. If he called it a peacock, it was a peacock. That's what it looks like in real time to speak those things that are not into existence. And because the devil understands the kingdom that we don't just live in a belief or a religion. When you ask Christ to come into your heart, when you accepted Christ as your number one, when you did that, you stepped into a real life kingdom. And because the devil understands that, when he throws up a tax to you, he throws those things up to close your mouth. When he throws up offense to get you into gossip or hate, when he throws you up into unbelief to speak that thing out of your mouth, when he throws up the mind battles to be able to speak against yourself for low self-esteem and you open up your mouth and you speak those things, you're creating those things around you because we're created in the characteristic of our daddy. 
of our father. It says he's the king of kings because he is the king. And we're little kings and queens in the earth because he created the earth for us to have a rule and a reign and to dominate the earth around us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And this is something that we have to understand that we wasn't just created. Genesis for me was, especially chapter one, was a chapter that I often skipped over because I was like, okay, I know what that chapter says. He created man and he created all the animals in the sea. And, and I know what that chapter says. And it, it's really not important for me to kind of read that chapter because I, I did skip over it. But when the Holy Spirit took me back and said, for you to understand who you are, for you to understand that you can pray over your children and watch things be uprooted over them, for you to understand that you can speak into existence healing in your body, for you to understand that you can speak and decree and declare things in your marriage, in your finances, glory to God, you got to understand who you are. And you got to understand who you were for from the beginning, what God had in mind from the beginning when you were created. When he created us, he didn't create us being slack. And I know that you're saying, well, well, Adam and Eve didn't make it. No, no, they didn't. But God said, I'm going to keep my promises because he is not a God of a liar. He is not a God that will repent. He is not a God that will take back his promises. So when he promised that he'd create us in his image, when he promised that we would rule and reign, when he promised that we would have dominion in the earth, he said, if I got to send myself, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to send myself and put the government on my shoulders so that you can rule and reign and do exactly what I created you to do. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. That tonight is what I have for this message. It's understanding who you are in the kingdom. And that is all that I have. I, I thought that I was going to be a little bit more long-winded than I was. Glory to God. But thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading that service. Facebook, I'm going to end you now. Thank you for joining in with us. We give you glory and we release the blessing over the you that you are protected. Glory to God, every angel that is assigned to you be dispatched around you as a hedge of protection. And we thank you for joining in with us tonight. Glory to God. And for us on the phone.